with six games to go to be tied for first and having the contenders come to our building is a plus. Tomorrow's game is a huge game for both teams. We uh, had a huge game in uh, Fort Collins and they prevailed. Great crowd. We expect an atmosphere that will be electric and our hope is that we can uh, turn the tables and have an outcome for the Aztecs. Uh, it's a very, very good team we're playing in Colorado State. Uh, Larry Eustace has done a great job. I believe they have the best record they've had in the history of the school. They started out 14 and 0, just I know you know that. And they can hurt you in a number of spots. They're veterans. They have at least three fifth-year seniors. They're athletic at every spot and they compete. And that's a good recipe to have a good team. And they do have a good team. So I would anticipate it'd be a great game tomorrow in an atmosphere that will both teams be playing to say, we want to win the Mountain West Conference regular season. And it'll be a game that will have an impact on who does win. Anything for me? Coach, what's the uh, a 21 season for 10 straight years? What's that mean now? Seems like it's just kind of common now with Aztec basketball. Um, 20 years ago, anybody winning 20 was significant. Yeah. Today, we play more games, more teams win it, but we've had some consistency and stability at San Diego State that's reflected in, in wins and tournament appearances. And that's what we want to continue. We want to make it to the NCAA tournament. Our number one goal as we started the year was win the Mountain West Conference regular season. That will get you to the NCAA tournament. So we have a chance to do that, and it's a huge game. 20 wins is a byproduct of, of getting, getting there. But we're proud of the consistency that we've had with the program over a number of years. Coach, when you look back at that game, um, statistically, it, you didn't play that poorly. I mean, your, your shooting percentages were up and, and a lot of the other numbers were, were up. Um, but you lost and you trailed big. How much of that was, when you look back at the film, was what they were doing and, 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 and how much of it was, was this them just getting hot, making tough shots? They were 12 for 22 from three-point range. I believe they made their first six. Uh, they made hard shots, but uh, they made shots that uh, were not quite as closely contested as they needed to be. Avila had 29 points, 12 for 16 from the field. He was absolutely sensational. And uh, we had a couple guys, one in particular, Malik, who was sensational also. He made every shot he took and wound up with 22 points, and they said, who is this guy? Uh, so. There were ebbs and flows. Uh, we have not given up 75 or however many they scored too often. And they did it in a variety of ways. So we have to, we have to be conscious. We have to make it hard for them. Our, our, our goal is every game, tough twos. And they made 12 threes. Some of them were tough. So we've got to do a better job on how we guard and close it with rebounding. And, and they're, they're better than us, I hate to admit it, getting to the free throw line. I think we were something for 17, and they were 17 for something. So they made what we shot, and that's normally our goal. Coach, you look at the bracketology? Pardon back, me? Do you look at those bracketology predictions and see where, where they have you? I, I don't. Safe? I don't. I, but everybody tells me about them. And if I'm watching uh, one of the networks and they flash up the who's on the bubble, who's in, I, I see that. But no, I have not looked at any of them to date. I, I'll be like a lot of people. We'll start as we move down towards the end of the season until probably now that the, the – change can be very dramatic and it still can we have six games left 
six big games that will have a lot of impact on everything that happens, including winning the conference. Coach, you were, you were very analytical when it came to what happened um, when you went to, to CSU. Winston, and I think by proxy, the other guys in their hand, Winston put it, we got whooped. From where you sit, did, did your team take that Colorado State loss a little more personally? A little did, Was it harder for them to swallow than maybe some of the other games that you haven't come up in this year? And how do you think that relates to how you'll play on Saturday? I don't think so. I, I think every loss you have, you take it personal. You should. And fortunately for us, we haven't had too many of those to reflect back on. But you take it personal. You, you didn't get done what you hoped to get done. And we're no different than anyone. One of the, one of the teaching tools we have, as I'm sure Colorado State is, the first game. You go back and look. What did you like? What did you not like? What do you have to do? What, what is it that you can't let happen? So you play off that a little bit, and then you see, okay, what are they doing different, and vice versa. So I'm, I'm glad we've got them at our place. I'm glad we have them at our place, which even though it doesn't guarantee success, I believe we've won 28 or so in a row at home, and we're, we're a team that our crowd is, is impactful. It, it has helped us, and it will help us tomorrow. We need to make sure we help ourselves too. That got it. The the uh, you mentioned uh, Avila scoring twenty nine points, and I know there were there were some issues with the double team. Um, have you been able to sort those out and and uh, and maybe do a better job of that tomorrow? I sure hope we do a better job tomorrow. He's good. He's very good. He made two threes against us when we dared him to shoot it. He beat us off the bounce. He scored in the post. Uh, everybody in the building knew he was going to get the ball when we were down two with 25 seconds to go, and he got the ball and scored. He's a very, very good player. And he is a very intelligent player, which adds to the difficulty of defending him. He's not the fastest, doesn't jump the highest, but he's the smartest. He plays very, very intelligently and takes advantage of any situation that presents itself that you haven't talked about in your, in your pregame talk. He reads situations as well as anybody will play.